back on another journey to truth and life, and I am your host, More Than a Conqueror. Sometimes the truth can be more difficult to believe than fiction. So I ask that each and every last one of you approach the information being presented on this video YouTube channel with an open mind. By doing so, it makes it easier to process uh, the vast amounts of information being presented. We know that knowledge is a defensive protection for those who utilize it wisely. Take that into consideration as we proceed to expose the clandestine unconstitutional crimes being perpetrated by your very own government. Of course, the disclaimer is not all members of the government um, are privy to and aware of the crimes being perpetrated. Uh, that means that there is a um, criminal cartel secret society that has been ensconced within government and authoritative sectors of society. This is what John F. Kennedy spoke of seven days before his assassination. He wanted to expose this criminal cartel and he wanted to abolish certain groups in which they specifically operated out of. And the groups that I speak of or the government sectors that I speak of is your U.S. intelligence agency, which operates autonomously, which means they have no oversight or accountability to the people. They are not elected officials, and they do not go through any gates of initiation to prove their worthiness and or integrity um, when being bestowed with the power to either help protect and serve the communities or perpetrate the crimes that are being committed. Of course, every person must come to that fork in the road and make a choice. They have chosen to go down the path of criminality and therefore it must be exposed. The crime that I speak of is gang stalking targeting, which is predominantly affecting the so-called Afro-American community, followed by poor, underrepresented white communities and Hispanic communities. This is happening here in America. You may be familiar with COINTELPRO. Uh, COINTELPRO was a criminal program specifically designed to disrupt eliminate and destroy the black civil rights movement on a group level as well as an individual level. Some of the ultimate atrocities of the COINTELPRO program designed by the FBI was the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King and possibly John F. Kennedy. Huey P. Newton and other members of the Black Panther Party. I, what I'm exposing may never see the light of day much on mainstream media. The reason being is they fear for their lives. And if you're well versed, you would be aware of the fact that in the 1970s, the CIA took control of mainstream media in an operation called Mockingbird for what they deemed as national security purposes, which means your news media is definitely censored. It is essentially what it says it is. It is television programming tell lie vision programming telling lies to your vision in such a way that it programs you 
or institutionalize your thought processes to conclude uh, matters a certain way. This is a form of mind control, which is very consistent with their MK Ultra program, which was also exposed in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, these crimes were continuations of the horrible experimentations of Nazi Germany, which absolutely makes sense um, considering the fact that Operation Paperclip, and go look this stuff up, do your research, Operation Paperclip um, happened after World War One, when the Allied powers realized that the German scientists and programs were so highly advanced with their technology um, and sciences that they decided instead of eliminating uh, and abolishing uh, these criminal uh, professionals, they in turn utilized them for their own selfish and criminal behavior thus forming the CIA, Mossad, KGB, etc. Fast forward to 2020, we have 75,000 black women missing. We have black men, such as myself, who are victims of the reemergence of COINTELPRO. Um, and having families, friends, and social atmospheres completely attacked and annihilated by this particular crime. Now, um, in 2004, PBS News uh, show now, uh, that's the name of uh, the show that it was, that was aired back in 2004. It featured an episode about signs of a possible reemergence of COINTELPRO as a result of relaxation of guidelines first put into place after, COINTEL, after the COINTELPRO scandal investigation, which happened in 1976. You can look up the 1976 Congressional Church Committee hearing against COINTELPRO for further information. Some of the things that were exposed were illegal surveillance, uh, fraudulent leaflets, bogus stories, um, and information interception that was specifically designed to slander and destroy leaders of the civil rights community. Later that year, uh, Newsweek reported that the Pentagon was quietly re-entering uh, the business of domestic spying, including recruiting citizens as informants. Uh, this is what we know as gang stalking. Uh, they're recruited as citizen informants and with the high unemployment rates. And what I mean by high unemployment rates for those of you um, who are um, who are argumentative of the fact that the unemployment rate is extreme here in America, I want to um, educate you real briefly. Uh, remember that there are two types of jobs. There are public service jobs and then there are productive service jobs. In public service uh, jobs, uh, the money is taken out of the people's treasury, which means that their salary comes out of tax 
peers, jobs who work uh, productive service jobs, meaning that they contribute to the overall uh, GDP of the country or the gross domestic product profit margin of the country. Public service jobs are parasitical to the country because it don't produce um, profit, rather it reduce profit. Uh, this is things that you can learn simply by reading um, books regarding economics. Um, moving on, however, because I want to make this video as short as possible. Uh, in 2007, the Washington Post magazine featured a cover article about gang stalking, which perpetrated several of the self-proclaimed victims of the crime as credible and claims about the types of electronic weapons alleged being used as possible um, and the um, electronic weapons that they're speaking of, I've personally uh, been attacked by them. Uh, the directed energy weapons are definitely real. And anyone who has been victimized uh, by uh, this unconstitutional, ungodly military grade weapon can verify what I am saying. Uh, long before I was aware that these sorts of weapons existed, I was complaining. And there are several witnesses that could verify my story, as well as the story of others who have been victimized by this. So these types of electronic weapon, weapons allegedly being used as plausible. Now, several local news reporters have documented police officers engaging in organized stalking for personal uh, vendettas, which means that um, they're operating as vigilantes in order to get back at someone. I spoke to a an associate of a victim here in the city that I'm in earlier today uh, who gave me information to research regarding um, a whistleblower here in the city that I'm in, Joliet, Illinois, who blew the whistle on uh, criminal behavior within the police force, uh, but was targeted by the very crime cartel that I'm educating you on. In 2011, police in Stockton, California, stalked the city mayor after a breakdown in contract negotiations. So even city officials and politicians um, are victims of the crimes that we're, we speak of being perpetrated from federal law enforcement, state, and city law enforcement. And I have to inject once again it's not everyone. It is just uh, those that are part of this secret society um, normally associated with Masonic orders such as a um, Masonic uh, fraternity of police, etc. In 2012, a police officer issued a citation to an off-duty police officer for reckless driving. Both cases suggested that the police were familiar with the gang stalking tactics and were unconcerned about any legal consequences, which is the biggest problem that we're having. Um, if the people that are perpetrating, the criminals that are perpetrating the crimes are those that are supposed to investigate um, and eliminate these crimes, who do we go to? It is up to us as a people to stand up, uh, unite, and do something about this. 
to their credit, during 2013, at least two magazines, The National and The Counterpunch, reported on counterintelligence operations, including psychological operation tactics. Uh, this is the psychological warfare that I spoke of earlier, uh, and that is one of the crux of their operations is the psychological uh, warfare with the gaslighting, slander campaigns, um, directed energy weapons, sleep deprivation, etc. by the FBI and private intelligence security contractors. And a lot of these uh, Fortune 500 companies do employ private intelligence security contractors, which are normally and always former FBI or CIA. Um, and they, too, dispatch these criminal gangs um, disguised as security contractors.